is Khaled al -Rumi. I'm the Director of Economy and Monetization at Big Time, and I'm pleased to have the honors of revealing the details of our game economy for the first time. Before we start, I'd like to thank you very much for your patience. I know we kept you guys waiting for quite some time. So without further ado, let's start going through the economy overview. Hey everyone, and welcome. At Big Time, one of our main design pillars is fair play, which is why we built our economy to be a cosmetic-based economy. For comparison, in a typical free-to-play cosmetic economy, something such as League of Legends, Fortnite, or Valorant, the game studio would sell skins directly to the players. At Big Time, instead, we empower our players by giving them the ability to craft cosmetics and letting them control the creation and selling of cosmetics in the game. By enabling them to do that, we are inviting them to be deeply rooted within our business model. The way it works is that we create the 3D models, then list the recipes for players to craft. What's special about our cosmetic collectibles? Let me tell you. Our cosmetics look awesome, and they convey status and uniqueness. Our game is a multiplayer action RPG, which makes it an excellent canvas to show off your unique possessions. And as you reach higher rarity tiers, everyone around will be envious of the way your character looks, as the gear will look better and better. All our cosmetics are digital collectibles with a limited and immutable supply, meaning any given line of cosmetics have a fixed number of copies, and that number will never change. Our cosmetic collectibles will also be player-owned, meaning that players will always have the ability to trade or sell them, whether on open loot or outside our platforms. Lastly, owning cosmetic NFTs would give players access to exclusive areas in the game that could take form in an exclusive lounge or a portal that has different non-power-related loot tables. Moving on to how crafting collectibles works. For players to start crafting collectibles, they would first need a space, which is our version of virtual land. Then they would need utility NFTs, which you can think of as your little collectible factories that get attached to your space. Once you have those, you can start crafting and upgrading NFTs, either weapon or armor cosmetic or hourglasses, which have a special function in our game economy. Hourglasses are limited supply artifacts that, once equipped, would allow the player to start generating time tokens while playing the game. Time is a cryptocurrency that acts as the glue of our economy. Since hourglasses are limited in supply, only a fixed number of players can equip them at any given moment, regardless of the number of active players. On the other hand, time tokens can be spent by any player, meaning the potential sinks for time in the economy are limited only by the number of players in our game. The dynamic that emerges from these two systems is that even if the player base grows, the supply of time tokens is capped and won't ever change. Now, to bring it all together, our value chain would look something like this. Time Wardens would craft hourglasses. Hourglasses are required by our hourglass owners who would equip them and start generating time tokens. Time tokens are required by our armory and forge owners who need them to craft cosmetic NFTs. Cosmetic NFTs then would be listed on our marketplace for all of our non-utility NFT owners to buy. In a nutshell, that's how our game economy would work. Now that we got the overview out of the way, let's dive deeper into each of our main economy components. Let's start off with space. As we mentioned before, space is our version of virtual land. With space, players can expand their personal metaverse within the game, which you can think about as the player's personal headquarters within big time. Starter areas are the first point of connection into your personal metaverse. All players will have access to these starter areas, and they would be able to decorate them as well as place vendors and storage units within them. For players to connect a space to their personal metaverse, they first need to attach it to the starter area, thus expanding their personal metaverse. Each space comes with a specific number of exit points, and once the space is connected, one of the exit points will be locked. For players to expand beyond one space, they have the option to connect spaces with each other. Each space comes with one entrance point, in addition to the number of exits. The entrance point is locked once a space is connected. This all could be a bit confusing, but bear with us and let's go through this example. To connect two spaces, we need to attach an exit to an entrance point. Exits cannot be attached to each other, and entrances cannot either. Each space comes with multiple exits and one entrance. Space exits are also used to connect utility NFTs to that space. When connected, that exit point will be locked, meaning if a space has three exits, at most only three utility NFTs can be attached. But that space will still have a remaining entrance point, which could be attached with another space. The amount of exits available for each space depends on its size. A small space would have two exits, a medium would have three, and a large would have five. Note that these numbers can also be affected by the rarity of the space. Here is a table showing the number of exits given a space's rarity and size. 
On the horizontal axis, we have the sizes, and on the vertical axis, we have the rarities. Most of the number of exits follow 2, 3, and 5, and the only exception are the exalted spaces, which have 3, 4, and 6 exits depending on their sizes. The main benefit of a space's rarity is determining which rarity of utility NFT can be connected to it. Each space rarity can only attach utility NFTs of similar rarity or lower. For example, an epic space can only attach an epic utility NFT or lower. The only exception are exalted spaces, which are compatible with all the rarities of utility NFTs, including the ones higher than exalted. Another benefit of space rarity is the placement of decoration NFTs. Some decoration NFTs will only be placed on a specific space rarity or higher. For example, a mythic decoration NFT can only be placed in a mythic or higher space rarity. Another functionality of space is that space comes wrapped. Players know the rarity and size of their wrapped space, but do not know the specific in-game details, such as the theme or actual positions of the exit until the space is unwrapped. Once a space is unwrapped, the in-game details are permanent. Both wrapped and unwrapped spaces can be sold on the open loot platform. Some of the space configurations that would be set once a space is unwrapped are themes. Here are some examples of how themes could really change the visual appearance of a space. Before we dive into utility NFTs, let's first get familiar with our game resources so that we have more context when going deeper into the utility NFTs and their functions. When it comes to Big Time's economy, we will have three main resources, time crystals, time tokens, and cosmetic shards. Time crystals are our version of premium currency. They can be bought from Big Time directly using fiat or crypto, and they cannot be traded. Time tokens are our main cryptocurrency. To generate time tokens, players need to own and equip hourglasses. Lastly, we have cosmetic shards. These are crafting materials that can be generated by any player while playing the game, and cosmetic shards can be traded through our marketplace. Now, let's get into utility NFTs, which are the Forge, Armory, and Time Warden. The Forge focuses mostly on crafting and upgrading cosmetic weapon collectibles. The Armory is used for crafting and upgrading cosmetic armor collectibles, while the Time Warden is used to craft, upgrade, and recharge hourglasses. Let's go into each type in more detail. The Forge has three main activities, refining cosmetic shards, crafting cosmetic NFTs, and upgrading cosmetic NFTs into their higher rarities. For the Forge refining, the process starts with cosmetic shards. We will have three types of cosmetic shards, Armory, Wild, and Forge shards. The Forge can only use Wild or Forge type cosmetic shards to refine them into refined Forge cosmetic shards, which is a main resource required in most recipes for crafting and upgrading cosmetic collectibles in the Forge. The second action players could take with a forge is crafting cosmetic wearables. To craft a green sword, for example, a forge owner would need time tokens, refined cosmetic shards, and then they will need to wait for the crafting process to be completed. The last action forge owners could take is upgrading wearables to higher rarities. To upgrade an uncommon green sword into a rare green sword, we will need time tokens, refined cosmetic shards, as well as three uncommon green swords. Note that as cosmetic NFTs reach higher rarities, the base look would be consistent across different rarities, but the visuals would become more impressive as rarity increases. Now, let's jump into the Armory, which will have the exact same functions as the Forge, but will focus on Armor Cosmetic Collectibles. For refining of cosmetic shards, the Armory would only use Wild or Armory Cosmetic Shards to turn them into refined Armory Cosmetic Shards. Armory crafting would behave very similar to the Forge, but again focused on armor cosmetic NFTs. And the same thing goes for upgrading cosmetic NFTs with the Armory. Now, for the Time Warden, which behaves fairly differently from the Forge and Armory. Time Wardens have three main actions. Crafting Hourglasses, Upgrading Hourglasses, and Recharging Hourglasses. For crafting Hourglasses, a Time Warden owner would need Time Crystals, which are our version of premium currency as we mentioned before, and the process would take some time to be complete. For upgrading Hourglasses, a Time Warden owner would need Time Crystals, as well as three Hourglasses of the previous rarity. For example, to craft a rare Hourglass, a Time Warden owner would need three uncommon Hourglasses, similar to how cosmetic collectible upgrading works. Before we get into the recharging of hourglasses, let's explain briefly how hourglasses work. Once a player equips an hourglass, they would then start generating time token as they play the game. Then, after a period of time, the hourglass would be depleted of sand and would no longer generate time tokens. 
Here is where the player would need to recharge it, through a Time Warden. Note that there will also be a version of hourglasses that are called Cracked Hourglasses. These hourglasses cannot be recharged and would vanish from the player's inventory once depleted. Cracked hourglasses can be found randomly in players' spaces, and the higher the rarity of the space, the higher the spawn chance for cracked hourglasses. Back to Time Warden actions, specifically hourglass recharging. To recharge an hourglass, a Time Warden owner would need the depleted hourglass, plus time crystals. Then the recharging process would take some time to be completed, which will result in a charged hourglass. In this example, if the recharging process takes 3 days, then the charge time would be 7 days, and so on. There will be three types of hourglass recharging, short, medium, and long. For each of these types, the active and recharge time will differ. Before we move on from utility NFTs, we also have two mechanics that are available for all three types of utility NFTs, and they are utility NFT level ups and bonus rolls. To level up a utility NFT, an owner should accumulate the required amount of experience points first, which can be gained through taking any actions with the utility NFT, such as crafting or upgrading. Once the experience bar is filled, the utility NFT owner can spend time crystals to level it up. Leveling up a utility NFT would give it extra crafting benefits, such as faster crafting time or faster hourglass recharging when it comes to the Time Warden. Another thing utility NFT owners could do is bonus rolls. Bonus rolls are optional bonuses that can be applied before a crafting action by paying time crystals. An example of a bonus roll benefit is doubling the crafting output. Instead of crafting one green sword, you will get two at the cost of one. Now that we got all the economy components out of the way, let's touch up on three additional topics that would be helpful in explaining our economy better. These topics are seasons, player archetypes, and acquiring utility NFTs through mystery boxes. A season from a crafter's standpoint is a race where all the crafters are rushing towards crafting that unique rarity cosmetic collectible. On the left, you can see the max issuance number for cosmetic NFTs depending on their rarity. And that's why for any given line of cosmetic NFTs, there could be only one unique, and that's why we call it a race. Keep in mind that to craft a cosmetic NFT, you would require three of the previous rarity. And in this example, we can see that to craft a rare, which is the third tier of rarity, we would require nine commons to be crafted. Now, if we take this and fast forward it all the way to unique, which is our 10th rarity tier, then we would need almost 20,000 commons to craft that unique. That might look like a very large number, but keep in mind that we look at this as being a collaborative effort between all players of big time during a season, where each player has a role in the economy, whether that be providing cosmetic shards, time tokens, or crafting the low rarity cosmetics. Every player will have a role during a season, and crafting a unique is the crown jewel of that collaborative effort. To touch on this a bit more, a season would last roughly 90 days. As the season goes by, the entire community would gradually climb through the rarity tiers, all the way to the unique, which should happen towards the end of the season. For the different types of players in big time, we made sure that we built the economy in a way that would be very inclusive to all types of players. Whether you're a free-to-play player who only looks forward to exploring new gameplay content, or if you're a cosmetic collector looking to showcase your awesome collection wherever you go within big time, everyone has a place in big time, and everyone should have a joyful experience within our game without needing to pay a dime. Now for Utility NFT Mystery Boxes, which are the main way to acquire Utility NFTs. We will have two types of Mystery Boxes, Early Access Launch Mystery Boxes and our regular Mystery Boxes. For Early Access Launch Mystery Boxes, each box will contain three Utility NFTs. The Forge Mystery Box would contain three Forges, the Armory Box would contain three Armories, and the Time Warden Box would contain three Time Wardens. The rarity chances are as shown here starting from Legendary all the way up to Transcendent. While for our regular mystery boxes, each box would also have three utility NFTs, and across all the boxes, there is a 90% chance to get an Armory or a Forge, and only a 10% chance to get a Time Warden. As for the rarity chances, the Silver Box will have a chance to get up to an Epic, the Gold Box up to a Mythic, the Platinum Box up to Exotic, and the Diamond Box up to Transcendent. Before closing, I'd also like to note that the information presented here barely scratches the surface of how our game economy will work, so if you want to get more info on our game economy, please visit our Big Time Game Economy Wiki. Before you leave us, we have one last thing to share with you, something you guys have been asking for and been waiting for a long time. Introducing Big Time's first eardrop plan. 
airdrops were always something that we wanted to do, but it would be reckless to do so without having clear and concrete figures on our max issuances for the different types of NFTs that we have. For our airdrop plan, we will be using a point-based system that depends on the open loot account holdings of big-time NFTs. The more big-time NFTs you own, the more airdrops you will get. More details on the exact plan can be found on our Game Economy Wiki. Again, thank you so much for your patience with us and please join us on our Q&A session that will be held on the 28th of November at 10am PST. Thanks again and take care.